Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Godly Play. I'm Bobby Norris, and our lesson today is going to be about Noah and the Ark. And I'll bet you've heard about Noah and could tell me some things about Noah and also the Ark that he built. In previous lessons, you learned about creation. You learned that God created the earth, God created the oceans, God created night and day. He also created the animals. And after every cre time he created something, God said, it is good. And then God created man, or people. And after God created people, God said, it is very good. Now people lived on the earth for hundreds of years. And uh, during Noah's time, which was hundreds of years after God had created uh, people, there was Noah and Noah's wife, and then their three sons. And each one of the sons had a wife. So let's see how large this family is. So this son and his wife is two, and then this son and his wife would be two more, so that's four, and then the third son and his wife, and that would be six, and then Noah's wife would be seven, and Noah would be eight. So there were eight people in that family. Now at the time when Noah was living, and he lived in the mountains, in the area that we now call Asia. And so at the time they were living, people had forgotten about God, and people were doing evil things and were very bad. And God decided that since people were doing such bad things, God decided that he would send a great flood of water to wash everything clean and make it all new again. But then God saw a good family. He saw Noah and the, and the other seven members in his family. And so God walked with Noah, and Noah walked with God, and they talked together, and they came very close to one another. And no one knew what God wanted him to do. God wanted Noah to build a big boat, which we call an ark. Now Noah and his family all worked together to build the ark. But the strange thing is that this ark was built in an area where there wasn't an ocean. There wasn't even a big body of water. And it was in an area that was mountainous, mountains that are higher even than the mountains that we have here in Cashers. But Noah and his family knew what God wanted, and so they worked on the ark and they built it, and it became the size of an ocean liner. In fact, it became about a third the size of the Titanic, which you know was a big ocean liner. Now, people around were probably making fun of Noah and his family, because why would you build this big ark in an area where there was no big body of water but Noah and his family kept on building and kept on following what God wanted. And so as they were working, animals began gathering from the four corners of the earth. And I'm going to have to lay them down because they won't stand up. And so we had mammals that were gathering, and we had reptiles that were gathering. And we had birds also that were gathering, but they all came from the four corners of the earth, and they were very different. 
and they came in pairs, two by two, a male and a female. When the ark was finished and all of the animals were on the ark, it began to rain. And at first it was just like an ordinary rain, but then puddles started, puddles started to come. But before all that happened, Noah and his family and the animals all started to gather on the ark. And so they would come up two by two and come into the ark. Some of them would come into the lower deck of the ark and some of them would go into the middle deck and some of them into the higher deck. But the animals came two by two into the ark and they all got in. And Noah and his family were able to get into the ark too. And so the rains came and, they, and the water rose higher and higher. And so then the puddles got bigger and bigger until finally what happened, all of the earth was being covered by water. And it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And it rained so much that those high mountains were covered with water and the ark could rest way on top of the high mountains. And as the creatures that were in the ark would look out of the windows, all they would see would be water. So it rained for 40 days, it rained for 40 nights. But after 40 days and 40 nights of rain, God didn't forget the animals and the creatures. He, he stopped the rain, and God sent a great wind that came and would dry, help to dry the water. And so as the water began to recede and the winds dried it, Noah sent a dove. And he sent the dove out to look and to see what the dove could find. But after seven days, the dove returned back to Noah. And so Noah left the dove onto the ark again. And so Noah waited another seven days. And this time he sent the dove out. And when the dove came back, it was something different. The dove brought an olive leaf. And that let Noah know that somewhere on the earth, away from the ark, there was some land. And so Noah waited seven more days and he sent the ark out again. And this time, the ark flew, or the dove flew and flew and flew, and then it did not come back, but it found a place to rest and to make a nest. And so Noah knew then that the dove had found had found some land. And so the water kept going down. It receded, it went down, and it went down. And the animals and Noah and his family watched as it went down. And then finally, 
the ark came to rest not on water, but on land. Now Noah and his family and the animals all came out of the ark. The animals came out again in the pairs of two by two. The mammals, the reptiles, the birds, and the people. All eight of those people came out. And the first thing those people did when they got out of the ark was to build an altar. And so there were some stones that were on the land that they found. And they piled those stones up and made an altar and thanked God for their safe recovery from the flood. Now, while they were doing that, they suddenly saw a great bow in the sky. And it was a bow of many colors. It was red, and it was orange, and it had yellow, and it had greens, blues, and violet in it. And you can still see that bow today when there is rain and the sun is shining. And we call that a rainbow. This rainbow was God's sign to say that God will never ever send such a flood again to cover the earth. The creatures then went into the four corners of the earth to their own natural habitat. And then um, Noah and his family began to live and to till the earth and to work here. But when you see a rainbow, the one thing you want to remember is that's a sign of God's love for us. and a sign of God's promise that never again will the entire earth be flooded. Now as you think about this story, I would like you to think about what part of that story was the most important to you. And then, if you have time, if you would go ahead and think about drawing a picture or sharing the story with someone and telling them, thank you.